Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This afternoon, the Most High, we get up to say Shema. Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Akai. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Sabbath day, 
I'm so thankful that the Most High God gives brand new mercies in a brand new day. I see my sister Isha on here. Come on in here, girl. This is the day. I see Daryl Dilworth. I see Jermaine Jeremiah. Excuse me. I see, I see you. This is the day that the Most High God has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it because we are law-abiding citizens walking in the kingdom of the Most High God. Therefore, as I continue to say, we ain't worried about the world because we may be in this world, but we're not of the world. When you're in a kingdom, come on now, it's the king's reputation that's on the line. Therefore, the most high God shall supply all our needs yes. according to his riches in glory. Yes. He said, come on, don't you be anxious for nothing. But in all things, in prayer, in supplication, making your petition known before the king of kings and lord of lords. He said, I'm giving you a brand new beginning on day five, five, seven, eight, zero. We walking in a new year. Shall you not know it? Oh, it's springing up all around you. Shall you not know you walking in a new year? According to the scripture, Exodus chapter 12. Do you not know you walking in a new year? Huh. See, the enemy is trying to disguise your season. He's trying to get you to walk into a brand new year with fear. Ooh. He's trying to get you to walk into a brand new year with doubt. Ooh. He's trying to get you to walk into a brand new year not knowing that the Most High God has already went before us. And he makes every crooked place straight. Oh. All we got to do is follow the instructions of the Torah, which is our constitution by the King of Kings, and follow the instructions of the CDC when it comes to this Corona virus. Mm. Let me tell you one thing. We got to be wise right now. We got to use wisdom like never before. And since fear is not part of our DNA, oh, we ain't worried about the coronavirus, but we are walking in wisdom, the washing of our hands like we did last night at our El Shabbat dinner, the washing of our hands, because every time we wash our hands as the children of Israel, we change our status, yes. what you say, what you say, every time we wash our hands, see it's something in the washing of your hands. When you are the children of Israel, all you do is change your status. Yeah. Oh, I'm changing my status from any kind of sickness to healing. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I'm changing my status for anything that I may want or think I'm a lack in my house to abundance. Oh, I'm just going to keep changing my status. Yeah. So come on now. You got to come into understanding that the king mm -hmm. of the universe mm -hmm. is taking care of us. And when you begin to walk in that understanding, you begin to do what? Seek him first. The kingdom. Because the Bible is about a king and a kingdom. And we're going to break it down today. I'm talking about the king, the keys, and the kingdom. What you say, most I got? Oh, I'm bringing a teaching today on the king, the keys, and the kingdom. Oh, Lord. He's giving you the keys of the kingdom. What you say? Oh, it's a difference between having keys to the kingdom uh -huh. instead of having keys of the kingdom. Oh, oh that means they're yours. Nobody got to give them to you. They are yours. And he's saying, whatever you bind in the earth. Uh-oh, I'm talking to some kingdom citizens this morning. Yes. Whatever you bind in the earth. I come to bind uh -huh. coronavirus. Oh, shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose in the earth. Come on now, I come to loose healing. Yes. Shall be loosed in heaven. But that's only if you're a law. Abiding citizens. You can't bind anything if you don't walk in the Torah. Ah. 
All you doing is making like no sense out of your prayer life. Because if you don't walk in the Torah, according to Proverbs, guess what? Your prayers are an abomination. So you can't even buy nor lose anything. My Lord. I come with correction this morning. Because binding something by the Torah is coming with correction of the word, of how the word should be taught. Oh. It's what you permit and forbid. Oh. So the most high God is saying, don't, don't have them thinking binding and loosening about them, binding up some devils. Let them know right now they already have messengers on assignment for them that could take out any enemy and the arch messenger named Michael. All you got to do is say Michael War. Oh, Michael just all around waiting for you to say Michael War. Yeah. Ye will not have to fight in this battle. No. Set yourself. Stand still. And see the salvation of the most high God. Because the blood is on your doorpost. Coming up to Passover on April the 9th. Come on now. Ye will not have to fight. In this battle. Set yourself. Oh Lord. That means stand still. Set yourself. And see the salvation. Of the most high God. Woo, eyes have not seen nor ears have heard. Y'all better come on now. Now that to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you thought okay. or even asked for. The most high God is saying, come on now. You're going to walk through this thing and you're going to set your face like a flint. Because you got messengers on assignment for you. You got Raphael to bring healing. Come on, Raphael, bring healing to the nation. Yeah. You got Uriel to shine a light on what the doctors cannot see. Huh. Uriel light up every hospital all over the world globally. Yeah. And right now we need a light in this United States of America because we have exceeded the coronavirus more than Italy and China. Yeah. Light it up! That they may see. And when I say light it up. That they may see. That every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess. That you are the most high God. Let those doctors and physicians and nurses. And everyone in the hospital. Come together on your holy Sabbath day. And say there is only one. And one only God. And we need to call on the God. Of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Let them get together on one accord and know right now that you are a rewarder mm. to them Hallelujah. that diligently seek you. Yeah. Oh, I see the prayers that are happening in the hospital. Now they starting to pray. But the most high God is saying, if my people huh. who are called by my name, Whoa. you need to pray, Israel, that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. I will heal this land and you will hear from heaven. So we got to start praying, Israel. Yeah. He's talking about his people. Not just any old body can pray. Right. I mean, Trump called for a prayer day on one of these days. <laughs> now, you know, he ain't listening to no Trump. He said, a liar cannot tarry in my eyesight. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, I said it. He said, a liar cannot tarry in my eyesight. Keep trusting if you want to. You're going to be done took some medication that you weren't supposed to take. And somebody died on ooh, Trump's watch. Ignorance. Huh? And the most high God saying, I will not have you ignorant. Of our satan devices. Come on and get ready. Passover is coming up, April the 9th. Yeah. Ooh, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, right behind it. Come on and get ready. Why, Trump talking about we're going to open all the churches on Easter Sunday. Huh? Y'all going to walk right into suicide. <laughs> He's talking about we're going to open up everything by Sunday. Easter Sunday. 
the Most High God said, I'm shutting it down because I'm the one and only Most High God and you better get on your knees and bow down. Bow down and worship me because my name is Jealous. And there shall be no other gods before me, Donald Trump. Uh -oh. Bow down and worship the one and only Most High God. Trump kind of confused sometimes, I feel like. I see him praying on the wall with the Jewish folks, and then I see him on church on Sunday. Pick and choose one of them, please. The most I got is saying, I would prefer you be hot or cold because if you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. Oh my. How can you follow somebody that's straddling teeter totter? I got a teeter totter in the gate kid. Teeter totter, teeter. Okay, I think today I'll be Jewish. Then tomorrow I'll use Christianity. Whatever works. That's what the enemy does. However he can get in, this won't work, I'll come through the back door. The back door work, I'll come through a window. The window won't work, I'll drop down through the chimney. My Lord. <laughs> Whatever work. But on 5 a.m. prayer, we come to tell the truth. Yeah. So, as an attorney, as we found out in Hebrew, the counselor, Ooh. which is the lawgiver. <laughs> come on now, Judah is the lawgiver. Yeah. And the scepter shall never depart from our hands. No. So I come as an attorney today to present my case to you that you are not in this world. You might be in it, in it, but you're not of it. Oh. So I come to present my case that there is a king. Yeah. And he's the king of kings. And he has a what? Kingdom. And he has given you some keys. Oh, Lord, ain't nothing like having some keys. You ever look at your key ring and you got all these keys on it and they got different kind of grooves and cut in it. So that means can't nobody open up your door but you. Mm. And see, the most I'm telling you right now, I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. Ah. And you can open up a door that no man can shut. And shut a door that no man can open. Because I've given you the keys of the kingdom. They're yours. They're yours. I can't just take the keys to my house and go across the street and try to use it on that door. No. It's not going to work. It's not going to fit. But see, the Most High God is saying when you are a law-abiding citizen, uh -huh. you got 613 keys. Uh -huh. And you ain't trying none of those keys? 613 principles. It's time for us to start locking up some stuff and unlocking some stuff because we have the authority. Yes. Oh, he has the power, uh -huh. but he has given us the authority. He said he's given us dominion over everything. everything. Every creeping thing mm -hmm. that creepeth so, ooh, upon the earth. Yeah. He's given us dominion. But if you don't know you have dominion, you walk around here crying and begging. Uh -oh, uh -oh. You know how sometimes when you hear about these court cases and when the person came in and it was their time to talk to the judge, they just broke down and start crying. Yeah. And the judge says, um, we're going to have to go into a, 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 a recession. Uh, we're going to have to take a time out because this person needs to collect themselves and get themselves together. Because see, the judge doesn't answer to your crying. The judge doesn't answer to your begging and pleading. The judge answers to your obedience. Yeah. Do you know the law? Because huh? crying your way out at the altar ain't going to bring no difference in your life. Do you know the law? Who the most high God is saying what? Yeah, do you know the law? So all that crying and falling out and they throwing covers over you and all that. The most high God said, if you would just stand up and be obedient to my law, you wouldn't have to walk out all these different situations in your life. You would not need another altar call. You would not need a, a, another prayer meeting. I need your obedience because I don't hear your crying and your emotion. Please, please, the mercy of the court. The judge is like this. I'm going to need to know, do you know the law, ma'am? Well, I didn't know that. But just know this. Just because you don't know the law. <laughs> don't mean that you are uh, exactly. 
you are exempt from the law. So now let me teach you what the law is. And so the judge has a right to teach the law. And he might feel like, you know what? Since you didn't know the law in this area, and I really feel like you didn't know it, I'm going to give you some grace. But you're going to still be obedient to that law. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, why did that just turn dark? So what am I going to do? I'm going to sentence you. I could have put you in jail for about 10 years, but I'm going to give you a 10 year probation. I'm going to put you on house arrest. And during that time, maybe you will learn the law. Mm. See, the law still works no matter what. I don't care what you say. The law always works. It's for our protection. It's for our direction. It's our instructions, our teaching. It's the law that we missed. So the king has come this morning to give you the keys. What you say? Yes. The king has come this morning, afternoon. Y'all know I'm used to 5 a.m. prayer. <laughs> the king has come this afternoon to give you the keys. Oh, Lord. Thank you for the keys. Thank you for the keys. Now, there's no sense in having keys if you don't know how to use them. Oh, Lord. So he gives you teachings and instructions with your keys. 613 principles. So we can't get excited about the keys unless we know how to use them. Yeah. Because some keys on our key ring, we done kept from some stuff. We don't even know what they go to no more. You only know the one key, and that's the key to your house. Tell the truth. And your car keys. But the rest of those keys, you be like, I don't know what these keys is to. I think these keys, you know, when I lit, I didn't turn keys back in. So I still got the keys from my old place. Oh, and this key right here is... To somebody else's house that you ain't got no business having no keys to. But anyway, sometimes you don't even know what them keys on your key ring is for. So the most high God has come to give you the keys of the kingdom. So you're going to have to get rid of them old keys that are useless. That you ain't even using anyway. So he comes to give you knowledge, understanding, in wisdom. Y'all ready for this information? Because I know I'm ready for it. Yeah. Y'all ready to get an understanding? I'm ready to comprehend this thing. Yes. And y'all ready to get some wisdom? Mm -hmm. You're going to make an application. You understand me? You will make an application. Ooh. Okay. The Most High is giving out directives this morning. He ain't playing with you. He ain't got time to play with you. You grown. I know y'all want to act like a child. I'm going to need y'all to put away them childish things though. It's time for us to move on to perfection. It's time for us to seek the most high God like never before by studying his word. Some of y'all ain't studying and you can tell the folks that don't study because they be asking questions. You be like this. Did you? Did you really just ask that question? <laughs> now, some folks I know innocent. They, you know, they babies in this thing. I get it. They still on the infamil, but we, I need to tell you on 5 a.m. prayer, ain't nobody drinking infamil. The good start the toddler, you know, advanced formula because you know they ain't switched over to milk yet. We're not doing that here. We're doing straight filet mignon. So when you come to 5 a.m. prayer, you better come with a knife and a fork. You better be able to cut this thing down, break it up and chew it because you got teeth. Now you might be missing a few, but you got teeth. I love you guys. I really do. <laughs> Good morning, mother. <laughs> Doreen, tell mother I said good morning And it's fire coming this morning, Doreen Afternoon I'm just saying Aren't y'all tired of folks playing with y'all? I'm tired of people playing with me Yeah. You know, some folks was asking me some questions I was like, oh, so you don't study <laughs> What you mean I don't study? I'm born again, sanctified, filled Oh, that's the an answer for a person that don't study I didn't ask you, were you saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost? I said, I can tell you don't study. I accept the Lord Jesus Christ in my face and say, why are you getting mad? I'm just saying you don't study. Well, my pastor already told me what I need to do. I'm asking you a question. Do you study? I don't be having time to study. Well, you shut down now. That's all you can do is study. My Lord. Maybe the most I got shut your house down so you can study the word. 
You ain't got nothing else to do. Turn off those Netflix and Hulu and all them other little TV things you're trying to watch and open up the Word of God and study it. Okay. Sitting around talking about what we going to do now. Read your Word. That's what we going to do now. We going to study to show ourselves approved so when we come out of this lockdown, we can walk out some stuff in our lives. Y'all wasting time. Y'all wasting time. And the most I got is watching you waste time too. He like this. When you come before him, because you know you got to go before him, right? In the end. Hey, most high guy. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I, I, I guess I must have made it because I'm right here with you. Yeah. Uh, the lockdown, that coronavirus, of, they call it COVID-19. What were you doing? Well, I was the one that took all the toilet paper and the tissue child. I was making sure my house is going to be covered. Oh, so you did like the rich man. That had so much that he said he would make new barns. So you became a hoarder during this time and you didn't walk out one of the keys. Come on, most high God. You didn't walk out one of those keys that I gave you. And that key said, it's better to give than receive. So guess what? I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye he worked iniquity. Oh, Lord, but I cast out demons in your name. When the church closed, I went live on Sunday. You went live on what day? On Sunday, because they said we couldn't gather together no more. So I opened up on Sunday. You know, I did that live thing. I didn't want to do it, but I did it in your name. You open up on Sunday in my name. Uh, first of all, what is my name? Jesus. You know the one we sell the blood in. Jesus, in the name of Jesus. That is not my name. Depart from me. I never knew you. You worker of iniquity on a Sunday. I dare you. And you said it to my face. We better get it together. Because the most High God has given us some keys. And obviously, somebody been locked out. <laughs> Don't want my keys though. I ain't give you them keys. I don't know who gave you them keys, but depart from me. I never knew you. You're workers of iniquity. Most I got before you go. Um, can you tell me? I would always say that word in the Bible and stuff. Uh, what does iniquity mean? It means lawlessness. <gasps> But we learned in school we wasn't under the law. But you didn't never think to look up the word iniquity? That's that whole study to show thyself approved. A work, because I'm ashamed of you right now. A workman not need to be made ashamed. Rightly divided the word. You don't even know what iniquity means. Y'all got folks taking a stand and reading his word and don't even know what iniquity means. Mm. Depart from me. I never knew you. You workers of iniquity? You workers of lawlessness? Oh my goodness! We're going to have to get this thing together. So, the king, the keys, and the kingdom. What you say? The king, the keys, and the kingdom. That's what we're talking about today. Being in the kingdom. Now, not your definition of kingdom, because remember, we already went through that. Yeah. You know, men say stuff, they write it down. That's their perception and their interpretation. We talking about what the Most High said about a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got it. Yeah. All right. Let me get my keys. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Most High. Yes. They who teach the kingdom shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. And those who do not, and they teach others, not to teach my law, my commandments shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Ooh, we got a lot of least folks out there. Actually, we got a bunch of them. Now, y'all trying to go to church on Easter Sunday. Y'all so cute. Uh-uh. It's Passover. Yeah. Not Easter. No. That's pagan idolatry worship. And the Most High God said, I dare you to bow down Ooh. to one of those 365 gods. 
Oh, and be very careful. Because many Christ will come. They're already here now. That's what Yahushua said. So one of those 365 gods, his name is Jesus. Did she just take Jesus in the cross? Uh-huh. In the resurrection? Uh-huh. He got up on Saturday, not Sunday. So your early sunrise service? Uh-uh. We gonna teach that too. <laughs> That's not my name. No. That is not my name. But you about to find out. Uh -oh. It's about a king. Mm -hmm. The keys okay. in the kingdom. Thank you, most high God. Come on in here, Evelyn. We miss you today, girl. Couldn't go on that tabernacle, child. Have to use wisdom. Got to use wisdom. One thing about us, we will use wisdom. We don't want to be like one of those churches, you know, that they, they say they bring a snake in, they let a snake bite you, and you believe in God, so you ain't going yeah, to be poisonous, even though it's a rattlesnake. I wish you, I wish you, I what, what? You know, folks do crazy stuff like that. Like, like, like this Sunday, they saying, we going to church anyway, because we believe in, you know, we believe in Jesus. <laughs> Open them doors if you want to. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. <laughs> it's getting serious. <laughs> Do it if you want to. Don't follow the instruction of the CDC. Because if you don't follow the instruction of the CDC, then that's on you. Yeah. But we're going to follow the instructions of a king. Yeah. And a king made a decision for us. Mm -hmm. He said, you, you're rehearsing right now. You're in the same place as the children of Israel, and you're rehearsing right now. So let's do this Passover Seder dinner at your house. Break out the lamb. Come on now. You know you can make lamb better than anybody, girl. I know, what's up. Break out the lamb, and we're going to do this thing in the house. Okay. As a deaf angel passes over our door. So amazing. Don't you love him? I love him more today than I did on yesterday. I'm so serious. When you get the understanding that we've been walking in ignorance. And ignorance is not a bad word. It means you just don't know. Oh, we found out Hebraically it means darkness. If you do know, you just being ignorant because you want to be. Now you could be ignorant and stay in the dark if you want to. Come to the light, Carolyn. Come to the light. You know, you need to come to the light. For real. You need to cross over and come to the light. Come on, cross over, come to the light. Um, Zenobia, because I can't see everybody that's out there, can you put their names in the comment? Because I would like to address them personally. Ooh, this is a setup, because you know I don't be addressing nobody personally. I'm not saying this. I know you here, mother. I love you. You already know the word. I already know you a praying woman. You praying, praying to down. Doreen, I see you. Isha. I see you. I think Minister Daryl just came in here. Who else in here? All right, throw their names up there. Miss Evelyn, I saw you. You in here. I shall live and not die. You got that right, Doreen. I'm more than a conqueror. You got to say it because you in the kingdom. You can say those words. All right, now. Oh, uh, who else in here? All right. All right, who else? I saw uh, Jeremiah earlier. I don't know if Jeremiah's still here. Uh, Adrian Woods, you still here, girl? You set me up with that little post yesterday. I'm gonna have to get you, little girl. Um, who else in here? Okay, is Erica in here? Stephanie, Erica, if you're not in here, I love you. Um, is Erica in here? Mm -hmm. Yes, Erica, my niece, girl, I see you. All right, who else? Who is that Robinson person? That's Erica. Uh -huh. Okay, all right. Um, who else is always listening? Um, Trina, I know you can't get on live, but you always are on YouTube. Love you, sister. I just want to make sure that we are all held accountable. <laughs> Whoop, there it is. What you say, boss, I got? I'm just making sure we are all held accountable. Oh, Lord. Accountable means you have to do something. What we got to do? Only thing you got to do is walk in your decade of declaration. I want you to watch the words that are coming out of your mouth. You better speak those things as though they were not as though they are. I've given you a decade of declaration. And I'm watching the words that's coming out of your mouth. 
Oh, Lord. All right, I'm going to hold myself accountable on that one. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Because the power of life and death is in your tongue. And I need you to speak life in this decade of declaration. No matter what CNN says, no matter what NBC, CBS, all those channels say, and what you read and see on Facebook. Walk in your decade of declaration. And it looks like you already started, Doreen. You said, I shall live and not die. I'm more than a conqueror. Y'all better come on. It's a decade of declaration. And the king is speaking to the kings and the queens and telling us, now is the time to make a declaration. Yeah. Oh, Lord. I gave you 5780. Grace, number five. Seven, completion, and eight, new beginning. I gave you grace, complete, new beginning. What you say? Because I know the end from the beginning. Oh, you already did this. You just walking into your words, huh? Oh, my. Yeah, you already did this. Now I need you to walk into the words that you speak. Oh my. I already did this? Yeah. If I knew you was be before you was formed in your mother's womb, don't you know you already did this? Oh. You just coming back through. You know how y'all always say with little kids like, she kind of advanced. She been here before. <laughs> Why you keep saying stuff like that? I'm trying to tell you she been here before. She got an old soul. Mm -hmm. Now we need you to walk into the words that you speak. Oh, Lord. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm with you, Doreen. And I shall live and not die. All right, now. That's the kind of people you need to be speaking to. And let people speak into you. If they start talking some nonsense, you better shut them down. Uh, sorry. I'm in a decade of declaration. And right now you're speaking negativity. And that is not the way I'm walking right now. Amen. I don't care what they saying on CNN, CBS, NBC. And especially we already know Trump is a liar. So we don't really care what he's saying. <laughs> so stop the nonsense. We here to tell the truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me the most high God. Now he's spinning in his lies right now. I'm like, Trump, make up your mind. Most high God said, I don't even know why you listen to him. You know he lying. Just flat out lying. Just straight up lying. So, okay. Y'all stop listening to them folks too that's lying. You know you, you know you in association with some folks. You be like this, girl, here she come with that lie. Oh, girl, you know she lying. Why are you dealing with her? In a decade of declaration, you better move yourself away from the liars. Y'all be like this, girl. You know she about to say all this and you know it's a lie. Girl, watch. And what else happened? Ooh, child. And what else? What you say? Oh, wow. Girl. No. And what he say, girl? You eating the lies on. You know you digging the lies deep and deeper. And you over there rolling your eyes talking about, ooh, child. I know, girl, you... Girl, every, every time she says something, it's a lie. <laughs> she's just a compulsive liar. I think she talked to hear herself talk. Because you don't get to get a word in. All you get to say is this. What? Shut up. Mm-hmm. Girl, no. <laughs> okay. And then when you try to tell something about your life, she talks right over you. Then you have to get back to your response. Uh-huh. Yeah, girl. I hear you. And then you hang up the phone talking about, ooh, that thing. No, she can lie. Just lie for no... You, you ever walk with folks that they just lie for no reason? They just be... You be like this. You know what? I think it looks a little rainy outside. Nah, girl, it don't look rainy. It's pouring. <laughs> <laughs> well, it all depends on how you look at rain. Oh, Lord. Go on out of here. I mean, a liar got to always, you know... They got to go deep and deep into that lie. Because when they tell that lie, I got to tell another one, another one, another next thing. And I'll be like, this, Ooh, what did I say in the beginning? Girl, if you don't know what you told me from the beginning. <laughs> oh, God, I just been talking to you so much, I forgot. No, Negro, you lied. Okay? <laughs> okay, you just flat out lied. Okay, so 
Guard yourself from people who speak in front of you. Okay, so don't be a say that, girl. I'm so excited this morning. Because I, I, I'm glad I'm in a kingdom. Yeah. And I'm being taught a kingdom mindset. Do you understand why you have to get away from folks that's unwise association? Because yeah. it's like a disease. It's like the corona. It's on their clothes. Oh, no. It's going to get you. You got to get away from stuff like that. It just spreads and keep going and going and going. That's why the most high God is having us to wash our hands of some people. Ooh. Mm. Bye, girl. Bye. You got to wash your hands of some folks. Dead relationships. Y'all keep reviving them. Y'all be doing CPR in these dead relationships. And the most high God is saying, it's 5780. Stop giving life to the past. That's gone. Stop resurrecting things that are dead. Let them folks go. Now shut the door. <laughs> like that teacher said the day before yesterday. All right. Let it go. Let some folks go. Actually, it said cut it off. It was that pruning part. Yeah. That you have to be pruning. You weren't going to like that part. You got to cut some people off of you. I'm serious. Because sometimes, you know, y'all be so deep in, oh, I've been knowing her for 20 years. But what do you know about her? Mm. Nothing. Oh, y'all just associates. Right. Well, cut off unwise association. I don't care who it is. Sometimes we got to cut off family. Oh, Lord. Oh. I'm so serious. If family going the other way, child, and you know you walking in the tour, one will be on the house and one will not be in the house. <laughs> one will be in the field and one will not be in the field. Y'all thinking about a rapture. The Most High God said, I'm separating the wheat from the tail, the sheep from the goat, the holy from the unholy, and the clean from the unclean. If you ain't walking in the tour, you on top of the house, but I'm in the house. Uh-huh. You're going to be left right there in that field. We moving on in the tour. Ain't got nothing to do with no rapture. If you really knew what the rapture was, you would never even believe in a rapture. The rapture is a dream that a woman had. She told it to one of the theologians. And they put it in a scripture in Revelation. Talking about we're going to be raptured up out of here. You better go study. How about you study the rapture? Why you got all this lockdown time in your house. Study the rapture. Don't take my word for it. And I tell you, it was a woman's dream. And y'all talk about, I heard a Christian the other day say, I ain't even worried about this coronavirus because the rapture is coming. I'm going to be raptured out. I said, girl, you're going to be right here. <laughs> the earth, the heavens is the Lord's, but the earth has been given to the sons of men according to the book of Psalms. Girl, please. Oh, I'm going to be raptured out of here. You better hope that coronavirus don't take you. That's the only rapture you're going to see. Oh, Lord. You better hope that don't happen. So let's start speaking stuff that are lies. That's just straight out lies. I believed in the rapture too. I was like, I know he's going to take me because I've been that one. I was birthed in the prayer closet. When this thing go down, oh, I'm going to be in heaven with them gold gates, streets of pearl. That's going to be me. When I found out, I'm going to be right here. I ain't going nowhere. He gave me dominion in the earth. I was like, okay, most high God. I'm ready to rule and reign. Can I get the keys of the kingdom? You was born with them. You were born with them. Just somebody stole your identity. And so now we got to get it back to you. Stop it. Yeah. Somebody that took your identity. And so now the Most High God is saying it's time to teach about the kingdom. Darcel and Dave, my sister and brother-in-law just came in here. I love you guys. Isha's in here. Call up the rest of the family. Everybody on a shutdown. They can't be doing too much. Tell them to turn off Netflix and come on and get a teaching today. Because you can't go outside. <laughs> we should have so many folks right now on live till it ain't funny. Oh, they watching that next, that new Netflix movie. Okay, anyway. I'm thankful right now, so thankful that the Most High God continues to give us wisdom. Yeah. If you don't do anything else during this shutdown, seek him first, okay. the kingdom, mm. and all his righteousness, and all things should be added unto you. Okay. Well, Most High, I come lifting up.
up everyone on Facebook Live this afternoon. The ones that will listen live and the ones that will listen later. Open their understanding that they may see you. Let them know right now that the heavens, the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has been given to the sons of men. It's time for dominion to subdue the earth realm and to rule and reign as the kings and queens that we are. I thank you for your word that's coming forth this afternoon that will bring light. Light it up, Uriel. I thank you right now that we have a messenger called Michael where we can call him and dispatch him and he would war, war in the atmosphere. I thank you for Gabriel who has a message for us this afternoon. I thank you, Most High God, that Raphael is bringing healing to every hospital, to every sick room, to every nursing home, to every house that is shut in. I thank you that Raphael is dispatched right now on this earth. I thank you that you would use me in this moment, in this, this hour, to speak your word. All I can say is, speak, most high God. Your servant is listening. I need the Ruach HaKadosh to lead and guide me into all truth. I'm not sufficient of myself. All sufficiency lies on the inside of you. And I will forever give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in the mighty, mighty name of Yahushua, I pray. Amen, 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 and amen. So the method style of study and it's a process of studying the word of Ahia, Asha, Ahia. Because where two or three gather together in his name, he will be in the midst. And if two touch and agree on anything, it shall be done. So this word has to be established by the method style of study which is a process of studying the word of Ahia, Asha, Ahia, yeah. which is I am, that I am in Hebrew, the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we seek his guidance and live in a kingdom lifestyle. The Torah is the most high God's teachings and instructions in 613 principles. It's where the creator speaks mother and then we search the witnesses through the books of the prophets the never ends and the books of the writings the ketabins collectively the torah the never ends and the ketabins or identify as the tanakh or as some refer to it the old testament which is the only book that yahushua study in reference Throughout the New Testament. Genesis chapter 41 verse 46. And Joseph was 30 years old. When he stood before Pharaoh the king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh. And went throughout all the land of Egypt. Oh Lord. Today, we look to the word king. Hebrews number 4428. Malak. Malak. Okay. A king. King. Royal. What you say? The Torah testifies. Exodus chapter 14 verse 5. And it was told the king of Egypt. That the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. Uh, Come on, Passover. Yes. Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 8. And we took at that time out of the hand of the two kings 
of the Amorites, the land that was on the side, this side, Jordan, from the river of Anan unto Mount Hermon. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 36. The Lord shall bring thee, and thou king which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. The prophets proclaim. Isaiah chapter 38, verse 6. And I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Asariah, and I will defend this city. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 7. Who would not fear thee, O king of nations? For to thee does it appertain. For as much as among all the wise men of the nations and all their kingdoms, there is none like unto thee. Hosea chapter 3 verse 5. Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their most high God and David their king and shall fear the most high God. And his goodness in the latter days. Ooh, we there right now. Yeah. The writings bear witness. Psalms chapter 2 verse 10. Be wise now therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Mm -hmm. Psalms chapter 5 verse 2. Hearken. Unto the voice of my cry, my king and my most high God, for unto thee will I pray. Mm -hmm. Psalms chapter 25, verse 2. It is the glory of the most high God to conceal a thing. Ooh. But the order of kings is to search out a man. Say it again, Dr. J. It is the glory of the most high God. To conceal a thing. But the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Yeah. We have completed the method style of study this afternoon. Yeah. Reviewing king. First we recognize there is a standard set in the Torah. In 613 keys. Then we search the witnesses through the books of the prophets, the Nevi'ins, and the books of the writings, the Ketavines. Collectively, the Torah, the Nevi'ins, and the Ketavines are identified as the Tanakh, which is the Old Testament's proper title. And is the only book that Yahushua studied and referenced throughout the New Testament. Okay. 5 a.m. prayer. This is our Reintroduction to the King of Kings, Glory. Israel. It is time to return to our original state, the Kingdom of Heaven. What you say? Five a.m. prayer. This is our reintroduction to the King of Kings, Israel. It is time to return to the original state, the kingdom of heaven. Micah chapter 4, verse 9. Now why does thou cry aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thou counselor perished? For pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail. Mm. What you say, Mosai? Micah chapter 4 verse 9. Now why does thou cry aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thou counselor perished? For pains have taken thee as a woman in travail. Shalom Allah King. Peace be unto you 5 a.m. prayer community. We must no longer cry out for things of the world that have no power to deliver, direct, or lead us. What you say? 
Shalom, Alakim. Peace be unto you, 5 a.m. prayer community. We must no longer cry out for the things of the world that have no power to direct, deliver, or lead us. Ooh, we. I'm so glad I'm in this world, but I'm not of it. Yeah. So now, are you ready? For the word of God. The father of Abraham. The father of Isaac. The father of Jacob. Are you ready? For the word of God. The father of Abraham. The father of Isaac. The father of Jacob. This morning, we are coming out of the book of John. Now up until the time of John the Baptist. John chapter 18 in its entirety. Again, this afternoon, we are coming out of the book of John. Now up until the time of John the Baptist. Greater work shall you do. John chapter 18 in its entirety. And it reads. When Yahushua had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook, Sadron, where was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Yahushua oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Yahushua, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Yahushua of Nazareth. Yahushua said unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backwards and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, whom ye seek? And they said, Yahushua of Nazareth. Yahushua answered, I have told you that I Hail he, if therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled, which spake of them, which thou gavest me, have I lost none? Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Michaelis. Then Yahushua said unto Peter, Put up thou sword into thou sheep. The cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Yahushua and bound him and led him away to Annas first. For he was father-in-law of Compertius, which was the high priest the same year. Now, Capernaus was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Yahushua, and so did the other disciples. That disciples were known unto the high priest and went in with Yahushua into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then said the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of the man's disciples? He said, I am not. And the servants and the officers stood, who made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them, and they warmed himself. The high priest 
Then ask Yahushua of his disciples and of his doctrine. Yahushua answered him, I spake only to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whether the Jews also resort. And in the secret, have I said nothing? Wow, ask is that. Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Yahushua with the palm of his hand, saying, Answer it, thou the high priest. So Yahushua answered him, If I had spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Ooh. Now Anus had sent him bound unto Compertius, the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said, therefore, unto him, Art now also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not one of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied it again, and immediately the cock crew. Then led they Yahushua from Capernaus unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. <laughs> Lamb, not ham. The Passover. Then went out unto them and said, What accusations bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a male factor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful. For us to put death, any man to death, that the saying of Yahushua might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Yahushua and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Yahushua answered him, saith, Thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thou own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Yahushua answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Yahushua answered, Thou saidest that I am a king to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, mm -hmm. that I should bear witness unto the truth. Mm -hmm. Everyone that is of the truth, here is my voice. Pilate said unto him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at Passover. What you say? Mm -hmm. Come on now. You better know what the scapegoat is. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. But ye have a custom yeah. that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Mm -hmm. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, not this man, but Barabbas. 
Now, Barabbas was a robber. May the Most High God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy word. The king, the kingdom, and the keys, part one. I'm going to say that again. The king, the kingdom, and the keys, part one. Today, we are focusing on this session of this series on the king. Then we will deal with the keys and then finally the kingdom. We first have to go back and redefine everything. We are reintroducing the concept of king. The first statement that I would like for you to remember is that the Bible, the message of the Bible is about a king and a kingdom. The message of the Bible is about a king and a kingdom. That is the message of the Bible. The Bible is not about religion. The Bible is not about a religious organization. It is not about a list of traditions or rituals. Even though there are rituals and traditions in the Bible, the Bible is about really a king and a kingdom. That is what the Bible, the entire Bible is about. Secondly, the goal of the Most High is and was to extend his heavenly kingdom here upon the earth. His original purpose was to extend his kingdom on earth from heaven and to have his children, his family to rule that particular territory for him. That is the Most High's concept. That is what he wanted which is found in Genesis chapter 1 in verse 26. And the Most High God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps above upon the earth. Yeah. The Most High is king of heaven. He is the king of of all creation, but he created this planet to be ruled by his own children. He calls mankind. Thirdly, the incarnation of the Most High was coming, was the coming of a king. I'm going to say that again. Thirdly, the incarnation of the Most High was the coming king. We heard in scripture, Daniel chapter 7, verse 13, the King James Version. I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. We also find in the books of Matthew and John that Yahushua came to the earth in John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with the Most High God. And the Word was the Most High God. The same was in the beginning with the Most High God. John chapter 1, verse 14, King James Version. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of Abba, full of grace and truth. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, King James Version. Now when Yahushua was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is that? Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east 
and are come to worship him. Yeah. So not only was the coming of Mashiach of the most high in the flesh, but he came as a king. Yes. That is important. He didn't come as a prime minister or president. He didn't come as a mayor or governor. He came as what? Say it out loud, a king. That is important. In other words, the most high is not confused about who he is. What you say? In other words, the most high is not confused about who he is. And it is important that we also don't mix up what the Bible intended for us to understand. Now, if he came as a king, it is important for us to understand what a king is and what a king implies. What you say? Okay. Now, if he came from a king, it is important for us to understand what is a king and what a king implies? Fourthly, the purpose of Yahushua was the restoration of kings and the delivery of a kingdom. Yes. You better come on in here, Holy Spirit. Fourthly, the purpose of Yahushua was the restoration of kings and the delivery of a kingdom. That is the purpose of Yahushua. His purpose for coming was to restore kings and to deliver to them a kingdom that they had lost. The Most High gave Adam a kingdom. The word kingdom means a king's domain or domain over which the king has dominion. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. You better teach this thing, Holy Ghost. The Most High gave Adam a kingdom. The word kingdom means a king's domain or domain over which the king has dominion. The Most High told Adam, let them have dominion. The minute that you have dominion, you are automatically a king. Ooh, come on what you say? The Most High told Adam, let them have dominion. Mm -hmm. The minute that you have dominion, you are automatically a king. Yeah. A king is one who dominates a territory or environment. And Adam, which is referring to all of mankind, not just a person, Adam is referring to all the species called man. All of Adams are rulers and kings over the earth, which is the territory that the Most High gave us. Yahushua came to restore these kings who lost their kingship and their kingdom. Yeah. When Adam fell, he fell not from heaven, he fell from dominion. Uh, what you say? When Adam fell, he fell not from heaven, he fell from dominion. Adam lost authority and power over the earth when he disobeyed the Most High. Adam lost the spirit of dominion when he disobeyed the Most High. When Yahushua came to earth, his job, his assignment, his purpose was to restore that kingdom that was lost by Adam. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. But he also was to restore Adam back to the kingdom. Yes. This is two different jobs. What you say? This is two different jobs. According to the Bible chronology, that means the time of the Bible exists. If you study historically, the years from Genesis all the way to Matthew is 6,000 years. What 
you say? If you study here historically, the years from Genesis all the way to Matthew is 6,000 years. From Matthew to today, it will put us at 7,000 years. So, the year 2000 brought us into 7,000 years from Genesis. Which means, based on the Bible, I am not talking about evolution. And all the guessing games the world is going through. Mm -hmm. By the way, we are not talking about the age of the earth. We are not sure how old that is. It could be much older than man. But man, according to the scripture, when the Most High created mankind... If you study and research the timeline, it is about 6,000 years from Adam to Adam. Yeah. The first Adam to the second Adam. The second Adam came to restore when the first Adam lost. Yeah. Say it again. The second Adam came to restore what the first Adam lost. Yeah. What did he lose? A kingdom. Yeah. And he lost his kingship. That is important. Kingship means his capacity to rule. Yeah. And he lost the territory that he was supposed to rule. Mm -hmm. The second Adam came to restore first of all the kingdom back to man and then restore the man back to the kingdom. That is why Yahushua is called the second Adam. Today from the resurrection of Yahushua to now we have 7,000 years from the creation of the first Adam. Yahushua HaMashiach is a king. Yes. He is the king of all of the kings. Yes. Therefore, the ultimate accumulation of the Most High's plan is the return of his kingdom to earth so he can restore what he had from the beginning. Huh. The Most High is really not trying to get us to heaven. The Most High is really not trying to get us to heaven. The Most High goal is to get heaven to earth. Yeah. What you say? The Most High is really not trying to get us to heaven. That is not his goal. The Most High's goal is to get heaven to earth. He is not really trying to get man to live with him. The Most High is trying to come and live with man on the earth. The Most High is not trying to create a heavenly choir. If he needs some singers, the Most High is trying to get some music on earth through his children representing him. So, the Most High's ultimate goal is not to get man to heaven, but to get heaven to earth. When they ask Yahushua, how should we pray? His answer was, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 13, the King James Version, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven. How will thou be thy name? Thou kingdom come, thou will be done in earth as it is in heaven. To pray means that you give the most high permission and license for him to do what he wants. In essence, Yahushua is telling us what the most high wants. What does the Most High want? His heaven.
heavenly influence to come on earth the same way it is in heaven. Oh, Lord. In heaven, there is no rebellion. Praise the name of the Most High. In heaven, there is no rebellion. Praise the name of the Most High. In heaven, there is no confusion. In heaven, there is no corruption. Which means that he wants that same thing on planet earth. And he wants to do it, not through himself, but through you. That is his plan. Now remember that the gospel, therefore, is the kingdom of the most high. You got to come on in here, Pastor Keith Wilkins. Remember, therefore, the gospel is the kingdom. Matthew. Oh, Lord. The gospel is the kingdom. Write this down. The gospel is is the kingdom. I'll say it again. The gospel is the kingdom. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time, Yahushua began to preach and to say, repent, yeah. for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah. That was Yahushua's first announcement. He did not introduce a religion. Nope. He introduced a kingdom. Come on. Now, turn with me to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 4, verse 43. <coughs> Excuse me. Luke chapter 4, verse 43. The King James Version. Yeah. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of the Most High God to other cities also. For therefore am I sent. What you say? Oh, we missed that, Erica. Erica, we missed that. Luke chapter 4, verse 43. What did Yahushua say? And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of the Most High God to other cities also. For therefore am I sent. The kingdom is the good news, mother. What you say? Yeah. The kingdom is the good news, mother. Yahushua is repeating here a statement. Yahushua here tells us that he was sent not to preach religion, uh -huh. but to teach the kingdom of the Most High. That the ruler of the Most High would operate on the earth again. Yeah. Luke chapter 12 verse 32 King James Version fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasures to give you the kingdom uh -huh. now look at this scripture this is a constitutional statement that is important to you okay. underline that verse these verses are important for you the pleasure, what you say? The pleasure of the Father is to give us the kingdom. So he is not pleased with us having a religion. Oh, Lord, what you say? So he is not pleased with us having a religion. He is only pleased. If you have got the kingdom. There it is. What you say? There it is. He is only pleased if you have got the kingdom. That is what we are trying to get. Yeah. Out of religion into a kingdom. Why? We want to please the most high. He is not pleased if all of you got rituals. He is not pleased if all of you have got is religious stuff mm -hmm. called Christianity. My Lord. He wants you to have what? A kingdom. Yes. That means that the most high 
is not pleased until you get it. Come on. By the way, this term, enter into the kingdom, is a term that needs to be taught for three weeks. Say it again, Dr. J. Who knows? As a matter of fact, by the way of this term, enter into the kingdom is a term that needs to be taught for three weeks. Yeah. Because when you hear the word enter, you think of going into something. Because when you hear the word enter, you think of going into something. The word that Yahushua used means much more than that. It means to explore and to appropriate. It is like entering a big place, but never going to experience all of it. In other words, being a believer gets you in the lobby. But you got to go and visit all the other rooms now. Yeah. Some people die in the lobby. They die as believers, but they never experience all that is in the kingdom. The scripture says it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom of heaven. In Luke chapter 22, verse 29 and 30, the King James Version and I appointed unto you a kingdom yes. as my father has appointed unto me that ye may eat and drink at the table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. What you say? Yes. The word appoints here means when a government Ooh, appoints on a citizen yes. the ability to be an ambassador. The word appoint here means when a government yes. appoints on a citizen the ability to be an ambassador. Yahushua says the same way the father gave me this kingdom, I am now giving it to you. Appoint on you the kingdom. He did not appoint on you a religion. Uh -huh. He appointed on you a kingdom. You received an entire kingdom. What you say? What you say? You received an entire kingdom. He appointed on you an entire governing authority. What you say? He appointed on you an entire governing authority. Yes. Can I get an amen in the comments? Hey. What you say? Can I get an amen in the comments? When a government appoints on you the power of an ambassador, they literally make you the country. What you say? When a government appoints on you the power of an ambassador, they literally make you the country. This is going to get you someday. What you say? This is going to get you someday. Uh -huh. When a government appoints on you the powers of an ambassador, when a government literally makes you the country. Yeah. What? When a government appoints on you the powers of an ambassador, the government literally makes you the country. When a government 
appoints on you and ambassadorship, they have made you a country. Yes. It is not bad when you slap a citizen. That is simply called an assault. Huh? It is not bad when you slap a citizen. That is simply called an assault. But when you slap an ambassador, it is called an international incident. Oh, most high God. I'm so glad I'm in the kingdom. What you say? But when you slap an ambassador, it is called an international incident. You are touching a country. Huh? You are touching a country. Let's read it again. The Constitution says in Luke chapter 22, verse 29, the King James Version, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father has appointed upon unto me. Yeah. Are you getting this? Erica, come on and run with me, girl. Doreen, I'm about to jump out this chair. Mother, you better keep praying. I sit here. What you say? Are you getting this? When you walk out of this teaching and into this week, yeah. a country is walking into the week. Why are you worried about coronavirus? You are a country. A country uh -huh. is walked into the place of your work. Yeah. A whole country is walking into that school. A country called heaven. Oh, my goodness. Yes. That is why when they touch you or offend you, you are not responsible for the kingdom of heaven's response. What you say, Doreen? That is why when they touch you or offend you, you are not responsible for the kingdom of heaven's response. There it is. Do you understand that? Yeah. Ambassadors do not carry guns. Huh? What you say, Erica? Ambassadors do not carry guns. Ambassadors never carry weapons. Nope. Ever. Why? Mm -hmm. He is a country. Mm -hmm. If you touch him, you wake up the entire military. What you say? If you touch him, uh -huh. you wake up the entire military. Do you get it? Yep. Oh, Lord. Do you get it? Yep. And the Bible says that the heart of the earthly king is in the hand of the real king. Yeah. And the Bible says the heart of the earthly king is in the hands of the real king. Yeah. He can blind you with your eyes wide open. Ooh, what you say? Yeah. He can blind you with your eyes wide open. He can open eyes that cannot see. He can do anything. Why? Because he has the real power behind the powers. Yeah. Oh, Lord. He appointed upon us a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Just like my father appointed upon me. Don't miss the last statement. There is one that as the son of man walked into the presence of the ancient of days and he gave him what? Power yes. and authority and dominion and a kingdom. And then he walked off. He says that he had a kingdom that was forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Daniel 
chapter 7, verse 13, I saw in the night visions. And behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before me. He has given you the same thing. Yes. What you say? He has given you the same thing. He has given you power, authority, dominion. The Father gave it to him. And he gave it to you. That is why when Paul, then Saul, began to offend and persecute kingdom citizens, the government woke up. Ah. What you say? Yeah. That is why when Paul, then Saul, began to offend and persecute kingdom citizens, the government woke up. And the king personally came to visit Saul. Mm -hmm. The king said to Saul, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Saul replies, who are you? He answered, and his answer was, I am Yahushua HaMashiach, mm -hmm. him who you are persecuting. You get it? Paul wasn't touching Yahushua, or was he? Ooh. Paul wasn't touching Yahushua, or was he? Tell somebody today, don't fool with me. Now you see, the problem is teaching this and listening to this and hearing this is one thing. But getting you to believe and accept this is a totally different story. Mm. As for me, I'm too far gone. <laughs> I literally believe that if you fool with me, there are invisible armies that will attack you. Yep. I believe that, says Dr. Miles Monroe, so don't you fool with me. You know when Yahushua met on the mount for his final meeting of transfer? He had a meeting with two people. This is an official transfer. Many call it the mount of transfiguration. Mm -hmm. This is not what Dr. Miles Monroe calls it. It's the mount of transferring. It is the meeting where the official transfer took place from the prophecies about the kingdom to the kingdom. It was the connection between the announcement and the reality. Yes. He did not meet with Abraham, did he? Because Abraham apparently never fully quite caught the kingdom. I find it very interesting that Abraham never worked one miracle. Abraham never acted on power. He never executed authority or dominion. He was blessed, of course, but he never used power. But there were two who met with Yahushua. Who were they? Elijah? And Moses, what you say? But there were two that met with Yahushua. Who were they? Elijah and Moses. Come on now, the law and the prophet. Now think about this. These two guys, first of all, Moses represents the law. And Elijah represents the prophets. Oh, Lord. So Yahushua said, from the beginning until John the Baptist, Emersa, the law and the prophets was proclaimed. He says, and from John unto now, the kingdom is taught. <laughs> Woo! Come on, most high God. Open our understanding. 
the reason why he met with Elijah and Moshe, Moses, is because these two guys lived kingdom power. Yeah. Moshe dominated locusts. commanded flies. He spoke to water and made it blood. He told the sea to open. This guy was acting amidentically. Oh Lord! Matter of fact, that Moses felt so much of his power, he told the Most High, Ahia, Asha, Ahia, I want to see you myself. You all don't understand. The Most High loved Moses. Oh, Lord. The Bible says that the Most High loved Moses like a friend. The Bible says the Most High loved Moses like a friend. Why? Moses understood his authority. Moses understood his authority. Yeah. Let me tell you something. When an ambassador wants to talk to the prime minister, he doesn't go to no secretary. Mm. You all don't understand. No priest or bishop is needed when you are the ambassador. Huh? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. No priest or bishop is needed when you are the ambassador. You got the red phone on your desk. What you say? You got the red phone on your desk. That is direct access to the king. Yeah. Moses says, look, I am not into all of this sacrifice and stuff. I want to see you personally. Yeah. The Most High says, Moses, I like you. Now, I can't let you see me in your earthly flesh because the power will destroy the dirt suit. But I am going to let you see me when I pass by and you will pick up the atmosphere. Oh, Lord. <laughs> But I'm going to let you, I'm going to pass by, and you will pick up the atmosphere. <laughs> oh, Lord. That will be enough. Huh. You will see where I just went. What you say? <laughs> you will see where I just went. You will see the nature of the Most High passing by. Mm -hmm. The glory that will lift every burden. There are still people who want to go through people. What you say? Mm -hmm. There are still people who wants to go through people. It is time to pick up the red phone. Ah. Direct access. No secretary works for the most high. As a matter of fact, the secretary lives inside of you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Appointed on you a kingdom, a kingdom. It is on me. Uh -huh. Say it. Type it in the comments. It is on me. You better tell somebody today. I got my papers. Come on now. Say it. Say it. Say it like you mean it and believe it. I got my papers. I use a different word. I have got my credentials. Ooh. Say it loud. I have got my credentials. Give the most high a praise. I have got my papers. Do you know what credentials are? What? Do you know what credentials are? They are not just a piece of paper. Huh? They are dangerous. When Nehemiah got credentials from the king, yeah. 
No one could touch him. Uh, what you say? Come on. When Nehemiah got credentials from the king, no one could touch him. Mm -hmm. And the king says, wherever you go, anything you want, they will give it to you. And if they do not, report to me. And I will take care of them. What you say? Ooh. And if they do not, report it to me. And I will take care of them. Ooh, Lord. Ooh, Lord. <laughs> you don't understand. Some of you all are going through some stuff. That is why he has sent me to talk to you today. So many are going through stuff. Just quietly warn them. Just give me what belongs to me. Okay? Then just walk off. You don't have to fight. Ambassadors don't fight. You see that this Christianity thing is full of struggles. What y'all say? You see that this Christianity thing is full of struggles. But the kingdom thing, he has already overcome the world. But the kingdom thing, he has already overcome the world. That is why Yahushua says, do not fret. Do not worry. You have overcome the world. Overcome means what you got, they cannot handle. Huh? Come on, Doreen. You said it from the beginning. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than an overcomer. Overcomer means, say it again, Dr. J. Woo, Lord. What does overcome mean? What you got, they cannot handle. Greater is he that is in you. Then he that is in the world system. Ah. Greater is he that is in you. Than he that is in the world system. It is a kingdom. Whoa. What a statement. The same way the most high appointed it on me. I appoint it. On you. Oh my goodness. The same way that the Most High has appointed it on me, I appoint it on you, Erica, Doreen, Evelyn, Zenobia. I don't know who else out there. Gina, I appoint it on you. Shay. Who know it? That means that you have received. The same authority and credibility as Yahushua Hamashiach. Your credit is good in heaven. Your credit is good in heaven. Angels, or rather messengers, cannot resist you when you command them. Oh Lord, we do not give the heavenly messengers any assignments. Dr. Miles Monroe talks to them all of the time now. I say when I am boarding this plane, I say, okay, I'll take up position. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. Do you realize that this is real? The Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, showed him the other day on his way to Pennsylvania. And when he landed, the pastor picked him up from the airport and began to tell him that we cannot go the normal route. It would normally take me 20 minutes to get to the hotel. But today, it will take us about an hour and a half. Dr. Miles Monroe exclaimed, why? The pastor responded that President Bush would be arriving in the city on tomorrow. Then it hit me, says Dr. Miles Monroe. Two days before he arrived, they locked down the city. There are roads that cannot, they cannot travel. 
And there are secret CIA guys all over the city checking everything. They are checking every street, every business, every house. They are checking everybody. This all happens two days before the arrival. The Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, before you arrive. I had already been there. Oh, Lord. He goes before us and makes every crooked place straight. Lift up your hands and shout to the Most High. I said lift up your hands and bless his name. Bless you, Most High God. Hallelujah. You are worthy of all the praise. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. That you are the most high God. Who Lord? Some of you all are worried when you go into the bank and wonder if. And what do you mean you wonder? He has already been there. He has already locked down those negative people, locked down those negative attitudes. He has shut down those negative folks. By the time that you arrive, everything is in order. Ha. By the time that you arrive, everything is in order. Give the most high a praise. Bless his name because he is worthy of honor and glory. You are kingdom property. He goes ahead of you. He says that is why he says, I will go before you. Mm -hmm. You are royalty. Yeah. I say you are royalty. I remember the first time Queen Elizabeth came to the Bahamas. A year before she arrived, they were sweeping the streets. The kids came from the schools to sweep the roads. Can you imagine the Most High has even that which would come against you preparing for you? Ooh. That is two different things. The under, the, they are under your feet. When you are royal and have the same credibility of the Most High, do you know how long it took the preparation before Yahushua came? His promise in his announcement of his coming was back in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 in the King James Version. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. So the woman shall have a seed 4,000 years later. <laughs> a guy came on the scene. His name was John saying preparation is complete. 4,000 years. See, the Most High goes before his people. Let me tell you something. Next week is already covered. What you say? Let me tell you something. Next week is already covered. That is why Yahushua said, take no thought of tomorrow because it will take care of itself. Why? The Most High is already in there. He says to only focus on what is today. Enjoy your lunch today. Taste the tomato. Don't just chop it up. Really enjoy your chicken and say the most high, thank you for this meal this day. I am not worried about the meal next month. It's already prepared. Well, my God. Oh, Lord. Royalty gets Preparation. I'm going to say that again. Royalty gets preparation. Say that with me. Royalty gets preparation. Can I get an amen in the comments? Hallelujah. You know the most high prepared me, says Dr. Miles Monroe, for 33 years for a jet. And the jet now means nothing to me. To him, it's just like a car that he used to get 
to where he needs to go to go to do my job and to come back home. Some of you don't need a jet because you are not doing what I am doing, says Dr. Miles Monroe, but you need a better car. So for you, the better car is prepared, and that is coming to you, Dr. J. No one can keep back what the king has already preserved and reserved for you. That is kingdom life. Woo, Lord. This is so good. This is so good. This is so good. The Most High gives you what you need. Not what you want. If you start letting people say in your house, the Most High will give you a bigger house. Look how quiet it gets right there. So for those who won't let anyone come stay with them, the Most High says you don't need a bigger house. What you want, whoop. You don't need a bigger house. So those who want to come stay with you. And so therefore, if you got a bigger house, uh -huh. it would not be used. So stay in this little house. When the Most High puts his credentials on you, everything works for you. Nothing can work against you. And sometimes it feels like it is getting close. And then you say, Most High, where are you? He says, they are still waiting on you. Be not afraid of evildoers. Do not be dismayed of wicked people. Why? Preparation has already been made for you. I am not going to feed you in a quiet place. I'm going to feed you right in the midst of your enemies. Oh, Lord. While some of you are waiting for a good situation to have a good time. The most high is the kind of all powerful most high God that makes good times in the midst of bad situations. He is king. Fret not yourself. Fret not yourself. Let's talk about the kings are like number one. Kings inherit kingship by birthright. What you say? Kings inherit kingship by birthright. Number two, kings must train for their role and responsibility. Number three, the glory of a king is all that expresses his nature. In other words, a king's glory is whatever he owns that expresses what he likes that is the glory. Number four, the word of a king is law in his kingdom territory. A king speaks decade of declaration and what he says becomes law in his kingdom. Number five, the power of a king is absolute. A king doesn't have some power. His power is absolute. The president does not have absolute power. He has to check in with Congress, which includes the Senate, the House, or the representatives in order for laws to be made. But a king checks with no one. When a king has a committee, that committee exists at the king's pleasure. When he is tired of it, he gets rid of it. You have heard in scripture, who can counsel the most high? That is always a question. The most high does not need any counsel. He counsel himself. That is what a king does. Oh Lord, number six, a king's authority is inherited in his sovereignty. What you say? Number six, a king's authority is inherited in his sovereignty. You know, Prince William in England was not given authority. He was born with it. Prime Minister Blair cannot give Prince William authority. Isn't that incredible? Prince William was born with the authority because he is of sovereign bloodline. Once you understand that you are a son of the Most High, Hasatan is in trouble. Once you realize that you are a son or daughter of the Most High, the devil, Hasatan is in trouble. Hasatan is not even in the Most High God's class. He is an unemployed messenger.
messenger, a cherubim. Man is never called a messenger, and a messenger is never called a son of the most high God in the Bible. Don't be impressed with messengers. They are impressed by you. The greatest enemy of man is ignorance. What you say? The greatest enemy of man is ignorance. You better post that. It is what you don't know that is killing you. What you say? It is what you don't know that is killing you. Yeah. See, if you don't know your authority, you act sheepish. <laughs> what you say? Sheepish. See, if you don't know your authority, mm -hmm. you act sheepish. Always apologizing. Why are you afraid of your boss? Especially if they don't live according to kingdom principles. Uh -oh. Now, don't get me wrong. We honor their authority, but we don't worship it. The Bible says that the fear of man is a snare that means trap. That is, that it entraps you. It makes you unable to get what is yours and go where you are supposed to go and be where you are supposed to go. The fear entraps you. Dr. Miles Monroe say he will never forget the day that he was delivered from the fear of people. And that delivery came from the revelation of who I am. A king's authority is inherited in his sovereignty. Yeah. Number seven, the edict or decree of a king is unchangeable. Now remember that Yahushua HaMashiach is not a prime minister nor a president. He is a king. The decree of a king is unchanging. The edict of a king is unchangeable. When a king gives a decree, you are in trouble. It cannot change. You remember when Nebuchadnezzar, when a king speaks a decree, he can't change it. Daniel was Nebuchadnezzar's friend. Daniel was on his staff. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Daniel was one of his best workers, but the king went temporarily insane. And decided that he was the most high. Insanity. He built this big statue. And told everybody to bow down and worship it. And Daniel who was his good friend. Refused to worship it. But the king had made a decree. And the king said. If anyone does not bow down to this idol. They shall be thrown into the fiery furnace or the lion's den. Interestingly, a decree. Now, you remember when Daniel refused to bow down. The report came to the king. Do you remember that? Do you remember what the king said? Scripture says that the king was so sad because the king liked David, Daniel. But he had already made a decree. Y'all better be listening to me because the king said this is a decade of declaration and you are a king and a queen. You better decree some things. He could not change it. I am trying to get at something. When the most high speaks, he gives you a word. As a decree, you can go to sleep. The economy could collapse. The government could change. The companies could go under. They could destroy the whole country. But if the Most High gives you a decree that it shall not come near you, let me tell you something. In a democracy, when your party wins, they can promote you and give you political favor. But when they lose the election, the next election, and the next party comes in, you are gone. Uh -huh. Why? That is not a kingdom. Uh -huh. But if the Most High 
promoted you in a company and the boss gets fired, the whole company changes name and another company bought it. If the most high puts you in that company, in the position, relax, please. Why? It is a decree. Yeah. They will come in there and walk around you, move everybody else, but you, they can't touch. Give the king a hand. This is a decree. You know when Nebuchadnezzar attempted to defile the decree of the Most High, the Most High made him an animal. There are people who are meddling with you right now. I don't know who they are, but you ain't there. But you ain't there because someone liked you. You are not there because someone gave you favor. You are there because the king of kings positioned you in that place. And if anyone attempts to touch you, he will turn them into a wild animal. Give a praise if you believe the word of the most high. What is yours? What is yours is yours. Tell somebody. I believe this. This is the truth. The decree of the king. You got to get it into your very soul. You are in a kingdom where the king makes decrees. If he said it, he will do it. And if he promised it, he will bring it to pass. I will say it again. He will bring it to pass. Tell somebody today. It's coming. Type in the comments. It's coming. What belongs to you is coming. You think that they can get rid of you. No, the king moved you. Oh, you did not get that one. Some of you all think that you got fired. No, they cannot fire you without permission from the king. Point number eight, the home of the king expresses his standards wherever a king lives tells you what he is like that is why they changed the name of the king's home to castle or palace because it does not look like an ordinary house there are places where you sweep the dirt to keep the dirt clean what you say there are places where you sweep the dirt to keep the dirt clean. What you say? In the house that Dr. Miles Monroe grew up in, they would take coconut branches to sweep the dirt. You don't understand that revelation. The dirt was clean. You could eat off of the dirt. They would sweep it clean every Saturday morning. My mom and daddy made everybody sweep. That wooden house on four stones was like a palace. Let me tell you something. The palace begins in the mind first. Don't wait for a house to make it a palace. Make your house a palace now. When then a palace will attract, will be attracted to you. Listen to me carefully. A palace does not make a king, a king. If you bought one of Queen Elizabeth houses, you still ain't royalty. You can sleep in the same room. You are just a citizen sleeping in bed. If Prince Charles came to the Bahamas and buys a pair of flip-flops and put them on, do you know what they are called? Royal slippers. What you say? Royal slippers. Are you getting it? You give that thing value. It does not give you value. Tell somebody today, the clothes that I have on right now, they are lucky that they are on my back. <laughs> Dr. J says that if you wears a dress by Calvin Klein, that dress is lucky to be worn by her. She is giving that dress value. You can always tell a person that doesn't know who they are they need to wear labels to feel important. Uh -oh. They need to wear designer to feel important. But when you know who you are, 
you wear something that you just picked up at Ross and walk around like a million bucks. Tell somebody today that royalty is in the blood. It is in the blood. It is in the blood. It is not in your clothes. When you sit in your car today and you step on the gas, it suddenly becomes a royal coach. You don't need a limousine or a Rolls Royce to be important. Toy Oyers are fortunate that you bought one. A royal bicycle is now a, a majestic motorbike. Why? Because royalty is riding it. Everybody looks at your shoes and say, shoes, you are lucky you are on royal feet today. Give the most high praise. See, they are royal shoes because I got them on. When a king buys a house, it becomes a castle. So go home or sit in your castle today and put your foot up on your royal footrest and eat your royal meal with your royal teeth. Number nine, the reputation of a king is determined by the state and condition of his kingdom citizenship. The reputation of the king is determined by the state and condition of kingdom citizenship. In other words, a king's reputation depends on the condition of his people. If you study history, there were Poor kings and rich kings. There were local kings and great kings. There were little kings and big kings. And there were all kinds of kings' territory in history. And kings were constantly trying to get wealth. Why do empires try to get wealth? Because the wealthier a king is, the more he is able to show his wealth by the way he creates the condition that shows his glory. Yahushua is a king. Can I get an amen? amen? This is very important. Your reputation is not important if you are in the kingdom. Everybody say reputation. Say it again. Reputation. Your reputation is not important. In religion, everybody wants reputation. So you are looking for positions and titles. Deacon this and reverend that but in a kingdom, Yahashua says, if you want to be great in this kingdom, you have got to be like a little child. Mm -hmm. Just kind of relax and depend. You know what makes you want to cry? When you see your son needs help, but he won't let you help him. He keeps going and doing dumb things and you say, ooh, but if Trey would well, just listen to me. I got all this money. You don't have to go and do that. You don't have to go and beg. You don't have to hang out with these stupid people. You don't have to sell yourself cheap. Not with all of the stuff I got for you. This house is yours. Everything in it. It hurts when... <clears throat> It hurts you when children don't let you help them. Do you want to know why? Because they are trying to be what the kingdom hates. Independent. Independence destroys kingdoms. Think about it. How did the, the Bahamas free itself from a kingdom of Great Britain? One simple act. Independence. Independence is confused with freedom. Now, don't miss this. Freedom is not equal to independence. Independence is trouble. Independence means that you have made yourself your own source. That is why our defects keeps going up. We keep borrowing. Why? Because that is what happens when you are independent. You become your own source. Look at this. Yahushua is a king, isn't he? Listen to him talk. I can do nothing of myself. He calls that freedom. I can only say what I hear my father say. I can do nothing except my father does it. I only do what pleases my father. My father's work 
So I work. I only do the work that my father does. I only do the work that my father tells me to do. And without my father, I can do nothing. Have you ever heard more dependent statements than he said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. That is, if you remain dependent, you will always be safe. Sin is the declaration of independence from the most high. Adam said to the Most High that he did not need him anymore. It is very important. Write this down. Make sure that you get it. The reputation of a king is determined by the state and condition of his citizens. In other words, the joy of a king is when the citizens depend on him completely because they put pressure on his reputation. Read history. Every time the people came before the king, they said, oh, king, live forever. Why? You got to take care of me. Then they would say, oh, great king, there is none like you. They would talk to the king saying, you are awesome, powerful, and wonderful. They would worship the king. You put pressure on the king. Oh, we can't do anything without you, great king. Thou art power, strength, and protection. The king is under pressure. What do you think worship is? Worship is putting pressure on the king. If you don't know the most high, he can't help you. Isn't that amazing? All right, this here is the good part. Everyone type in the comments, reputation. Say it again for namesake. Reputation. The most high's reputation rides on your standards of living. What you say? The most high's reputation rides on your standard of living. Let me tell you, I remember when I got delivered from my salary. Mm. Your standard of living is not supposed to be on your salary. It's supposed to be on the king. There is a difference. If you keep looking to your salary, then your salary becomes your source, mm. which means that you become independent again from the king. Dr. Miles Monroe says, I had to be delivered. Many of you have heard that a king owns everything. He can move things around, but the problem is that the kingdom doesn't work without belief. Yahushua kept saying, according to your faith, according to your faith, according to your faith. Do you have faith? Faith means obedience to believe this. Do you have faith to stop living on your salary? Collect it and use it, but don't let it become your source. The king's reputation hinges on the conditions of your life. The children of Israel, when the Most High decided to become their king, he told Moses to have them come out of the desert to me. Tell them what to do, to worship me. What is worship? To put pressure on the king. Call him great. Call him powerful. Call him wonderful. Call him all power, Most High God. Tell him he's awesome in your life. He says to them, I will be your most high and you will be my people. He is trying to get them to depend. Do you understand what I am saying? When they finally decided to come out of Egypt, they had no guarantee. They did not know where they were going. They did not have anything. They just said, okay, Moses, we will go with you based on your word. They were living off of a salary in Egypt. They got a portion of onions, garlic, free housing, and health care in Egypt. The Most High says, I want you to come out. And, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> the Most High says, I want you to come out and meet me in the desert. I'm not saying to leave your job, stay on your job. 
keep getting a salary, but get released from it today. The king's reputation on the state of his citizens. The less that you can depend on the most high, the more you have to provide for yourself. When the children of Israel came out, what did the most high do? He shifted all the money in the banks in Egypt in one night. What you say? It didn't happen until they decided to come out and go. You mean to tell me that for 400 years, all that money was theirs? I wonder what is being held up by your independence from the most high God. It says that when they left Egypt, that there were donkeys and they were staggering under the weight of the gold and the silver. Think of that. They were slaves on Monday. Then on Tuesday, they were the richest people in the desert. Why? They made him their king and his reputation kicked in. Remember that the Most High kept telling them, they will be my people and they and that I will be their God, the Most High. And he kept repeating that. Why? If you tell the other nations that he is your Most High God, his name is out there. That is why it is important for you to publicly confess that the Most High God is your King, who is your Lord Almighty and your Savior. Tell all the people that the Most High is my God. And when you are saying it, you are not just saying it for them. You are saying it to put pressure on the king. David said, if it was not for the Lord who was on my side, I would be consumed. You need to get the point or get to the point when you say the most high, this coronavirus is your problem. Don't just say it quietly. Tell everyone that is the most high's problem. You see, they went out of Egypt. Moses set the most high up. Moses went before Pharaoh. The most high said, he put his name out there. Pharaoh said, who? The Moses said, I am that I am. A higher, Asha higher. Tell, sent me to tell you to let the labor force go. Pharaoh says, who is this God? Moses said, you don't want to find out. Just let him go. It's not in your best interest to find out. But if you want to meet him, you might meet him in the wrong way. So just cooperate. He put pressure on the Most High. And Moses told Pharaoh and all of Egypt about Ahia, Asha, Ahia. I am that I am. Your life and your standard of living will change today in the name of the king because his name is on the line. Those people came out there and one night, the Most High, the Lord, you see that the word all throughout the book of Exodus. Lord, what does that mean? Owner, he kept shifting things. The Bible says that he made Egyptians give to the children of Israel. He is the God that can make the person who said no yesterday to say yes today. Ain't no bank supposed to rule your life. Who are you? If you are a kingdom citizen, no bank or financial institution can run your life after today. If he is Lord, the Most High, he will make the Egyptians favored towards you. He will make them, they will say, I don't know why I am doing this. All the while, they are blessing you. The Most High says that you have been trying to fight them. He says, no, tell them who I am and what I am to you. The pressure is on heaven now. Dr. Miles Monroe is our example. He says that he put a picture of an airplane on the refrigerator. And for months, he told everyone that the Most High will provide an airplane for me. There are two ways to get an airplane. You can work 25 years, 
Save all your money. Don't buy anything else and just buy a plane. Then be told, oh Lord, then be too old to fly it and die. Or you can brag on him and say, look, you have got to supply it. I told everyone about it. Then he will just shift the thing. You don't understand. He will make them favorable towards you. He is king. Why? Because his reputation is on the line. See, when you or I go down and see that airplane, the people will say, wow, you serve a rich government. Your king's reputation must be awesome. It's not about an airplane. It's about his namesake. Your promotion is not about you. It's about his namesake. Your business will multiply after today, not because the Most High wants to make you rich, but to make his name great. He wants his name to be glorified all over the Gulf Coast and all over the world. His name shall be glorified. How magnificent is your name, the Most High in all the earth. Give the Most High all your praise today. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I honor you. I worship you. I give you the glory because you cannot fail. You are unchangeable. You change not. With men, things might be impossible, but with the Most High God, all things are possible. You make a way out of no way because you are the way, the truth, and the light. You go before us and make every crooked place straight. We shall live and not die. You will make our enemies our footstool. I love you, Most High, from here to eternity. You are the one and only God. You are Ekad. You are life before death. You are here today, yesterday, and forevermore. You change not. Thank you, Most High, for a kingdom mindset. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My soul says yes. Hallelujah.
Ooh-wee! I see why that he is teaching us to get a kingdom mindset and come out of this world. We're in it, but we're not, oh, we're not of it. And Yahushua has already overcome the world. This teaching was mind blowing. It was awesome. The Most High God taught it himself. Bless you, Pastor Ray. Gina, bless you. Erica, Doreen, Mother, Evelyn, Zenobia, whoever is still in here, bless you today. This is our decade of declaration and we're going to put some pressure on the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He said, I dare you to start making declarations about me. I dare you to start speaking the King's word. I dare you. This is the decade of declaration. Speak it, mother. Speak it, mother. Speak it, Doreen. Speak it, Gina. Speak it, Erica. Speak it, Marie. Speak it, Darcel and Dave. Speak it, Isha. This is the decade of declaration. I shall live and I die. Hallelujah. The king's reputation is on the line. Thank you, Most High God, for this awesome Sabbath teaching. Please share this video. Share this video. We come in with part two next Sabbath as we continue on 5 a.m. prayer Monday through Friday to teach the kingdom experience. Aren't the scales falling off of your eyes now? He didn't come to bring a religion. He came to bring a kingdom. And we missed the kingdom message. We taught everything except the kingdom. But we're teaching it now. Ooh, the most high God is amazing. He is so, so, so amazing. I love you guys. Do you understand me? I truly, 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 I honor you and I love you so much. Because we walking through this thing together. We are walking through this together. And I'm thankful. Who Lord. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You know, he always gives us teachings and instructions. So, you know, the instructions that we gave you guys um, about the coronavirus. We know the washing of our hands and at least try to wash your hands for 20 seconds. And every time you think about it, wash your hands. Don't touch your mouth. Don't touch your eyes. Um, do not be in a group of people, more than 10 people. You really shouldn't be, uh, be with anybody. You should be doing your social distancing right now. And it's important. Um, we have learned that the United States of America, we have more cases in China and it Italy. <clears throat> um, but one thing that they was not telling us, um, and that is how to... If you get the coronavirus, how to treat yourself at home? Because you really don't want to go to anybody's emergency room. Now, I'm not telling you not to go to the emergency room. I'm saying let that be your last resort. Like if you just cannot breathe. Nobody's going to tell you to sit there and not seek help if you cannot breathe. If you cannot breathe. So the things that this nurse was saying is that you want to... Act like you have it. <clears throat> what would you do if you had it? She said you need to have some kind of mucus loosening uh, medication on hand. I would say like uh, Mucinex. I would say any kind of Tylenol. You want to take Tylenol and not ibuprofen. Um, any kind of Dayquil and Nightquil. Any kind of Theraflu. Um, you want to get a humidifier. You should have a humidifier. If you don't have a humidifier, you want to get in a hot, 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 hot shower and then just let all that steam <clears throat> go up your nostrils and 
to uh, break up all of the uh, mucus. Because, see, that's what that mucus is trying to form and trying to, you know, form that uh, pneumonia, the fluids that's in your uh, lungs. Uh, they said you also want to um, have a real good cough medicine because the cough is horrible. So you want to have something that's going to um, try to control that cough to the best that you can um, and continue <clears throat> with the social distancing because that is really helping that you're not in contact with people. But what blew my mind this morning is that you know how you put on those protective gloves and you, you're thinking you're protecting yourself, right? Um, they're saying that you should not wear protective gloves because now you're contaminating everything. So say you put on these protective gloves and you go to the grocery store, you touching this, you touching that, you touching that, you putting that back down, you put, so you're recontaminating everything. So the best thing to do is when you go into a grocery store, wash your hands before you do anything. After you get everything you need, wash your hands again when you come out of there. Have some Pirelle, uh, some kind of hand sanitizer on deck at all time. Have those Clorox uh, sanitary wipes like in your car. Continually wipe off your steering wheel. Anything that you touch, wipe it off. <clears throat> Even, you know, going to get your mail. Because when I was going to the mailbox, I would put the gloves on, put the key in, you know, going through the mail. And then when they said today, you're contaminated. You just touched the key on the mailbox. You just touched the mailbox. You just got the mail out. So you got all these contaminants on. You're going to touch the front door you but you got on gloves so you think you're protecting yourself but you're contaminating everything so we just want to be wise okay we're not in fear we're not we're not afraid we're going to use wisdom because that's what the torah gives us teachings and instruction he gives us wisdom so we need to apply these things to our lives i'm like thank you most high because, you know, they don't know things about this virus. It's just every day something changes. So as I, I found out this changes, I'm going to share with you guys. Just be wise. Stay in your house. It's Passover anyway. You're supposed to be at home. So just stay in your house. <clears throat> and I'm thankful. I'm so thankful for this teaching. This teaching was amazing. The Most High God is always on time. He's always teaching us. He's always directing us. He's always correcting us. <laughs> I just love him. I love him so much that he would teach us. So this has been awesome. I love you, mother. I love you so very much. Give her a big hug and kiss for me, Doreen, if you can. Now, you're in a social distance and you'd be in the house, but I'm just saying. Okay? Don't be hugging on mother if you can't hug her now. Okay. So I'm thankful, thankful, thankful. I, I, I pray that y'all feel me embracing you in this atmosphere because his rest on this Sabbath is amazing. I'm loving his presence right now. We're in the kingdom atmosphere. It's all good. So I'm so thankful, thankful, thankful. So be not dismayed. Do not be, you know, discouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. So be courageous and be encouraged. So get to the blog spot, get to Facebook, get to YouTube. It will encourage you. Have a supernatural day seven. Please share this video because it was so much information. We're going to have to sit down and listen to it again because it was so powerful. So I'm thankful. I love you, love you, love you. You know I love you. Bye. Bye now. So good. So, so good.